Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Alright, I just thought I'd do this little video here because I'm still doing more experiments with Tesla coils. Now I've put the GU81 to one side where it'll be safe while I just do some small scale experiments. Anyway, this is the setup that I've got right now. So I'll just take you through a little talk through of the circuits. Over here, this is the new an improved power supply. What we've got here is a 40 watt fluorescent ballast, magnetic ballast of course, and that's going into my rectifier, you know, my doubling rectifier, and then that's going into the circuit. Now the advantages of that is that I don't have to use heavy transformers to get a good 600 volts into the circuit. Disadvantages is that there is no isolation from the mains. Anyway, I'm using one of those Russian clone PL500, whatever they are, clones. But you might have noticed there's no feedback coil. Where's the feedback coil? Well, there is a feedback coil. You can see underneath the secondary, you can see the feedback coil is right there, which is wound onto the bottom of the secondary. And that seems to work pretty good. Now, first time I powered this up, I didn't get much of anything. It did oscillate, but nothing didn't really do anything, except make a lot of interference. However, I flipped the primary round, and now, when I plug it in, even though we don't get breakouts, well, actually, I tell a lie, we do get breakouts. Except it's not at this tip here. It's all along this wire. This wire from the coil glows blue with corona and it wiggles about like crazy. So I'm just going to plug this in now. I've got the tube all warmed up. Let's see this thing in action. Yeah, you can see right there the wire. You can hear a hiss and corona and in the dark. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Alright, the camera is going to blur out like crazy. Let me just fix the autofocus and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are in low light. So you might be able to see the cor Oops. You might be able to see the corona on the wire now. Zero go plugging it in. Yeah, you can see it right there. Let's do that again. And that's actually how it looks in real life. So there's not some weird thing going on with the camera making it look a bluish purple colour. That's actually what it does look like. Okay, I'll go on and put a little breakout point on there now. So now we don't get glowing wire. Although there's still no breakout, or at least not much of anything. And then we do get quite a decent like flyback like arc. I don't want to run that for too long because I can just feel the heat coming off that secondary. So anyway, let's just see what the frequency we're getting out of this is. Now, turn on my meter here. So I've got one lead. Just set a tape to the wall, which is going to pick up the output from this. So I'll turn that on. And we're at about 396 kilohertz. If I adjust this, I can adjust the frequency. You couldn't really see it because my hand was blocking it, but I can tune in the frequency that we need from about 383 kilohertz to about 320, but it doesn't like that because it starts making a weird noise. Okay, so now I'm going to try it with the other coil again. Now I was talking to one of my fellow YouTubers, Electro. And he said that a one nanofarad capacitor, which if you remember is what I was using with this coil, is way too high. He said I need something more like 450 picofarads. So what I've gone and done is I've taken the input filter capacitor out of a magnetron from a microwave and I measured this. It's about 650 picofarads. I think the tube should be warmed up now, so I'll just plug this in and uh Hopefully not. What the hell was that? Well, there's your problem. This was arcing into that. I had no 
dear, that was there. I'm going to have to do something about that. So that doesn't short out again. Let's just see, make sure there's no wire damage. There's a little bit of a blur, but my valve seems to have turned itself off. That was on a minute ago. My filament keeps disconnecting, so I've put my meter between the power supply and the filament. Just look at the amount of current that filament's pulling. Almost, well, just shy of two amps. That's just insane. Mind you, not as, not as insane as the GU81 that I've got. That's going to pull 11 amps, according to Rodolcal 2007 and a few other sources. But I've got a transformer that I'm working on that hopefully should power that up. So, well, yeah, that's one that I'm working on. So anyway, now let's do this again. So this is without any capacitor whatsoever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this capacitor to the various taps on the coil so you can see what happens. Okay, so this is the waveform on the scope at the moment and it's oscillating at a very high frequency, which it shouldn't be doing. And as I go down, so on this tap here, you know, the frequency goes down a bit, but also the amount of output goes down. And if I put it onto this tap here, something really weird happens. It makes the speakers on my computer buzz. The computer across the room, that is. That's kind of weird. But my trusty tuning capacitor seems to work pretty good. Now I get about the same amount of output that I did with the other coil. Um, and if you look on the scope, it's like way too much for the scope to even measure. Let's do the light bulb trick. Turning an ordinary light bulb into a plasma globe. Yes, because I'm absolutely barking mad. Check that out. Oh, wait, you didn't see it. All you saw was arcing to the thing. Check this out. Isn't that just the most craziest freakiest thing you've ever seen. Although, I still think I get the best results with this coil here. And, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to talk like Radio Fun 232. Although, I still think I get the best results with this particular primary. And the tuning capacitor set to about here. So, I'll show you the trick with the light bulb again. So, let's just plug it in. Let's make sure it's oscillating. Yep. So notice we've got a little bit of plasma leaking out the wire there. Oh. This wire is starting... I didn't... And now here's the light bulb. Look at that. The thing is, it's a little too bright for the camera to see, so... I'm... We'll check that out. There is a bulb turned into a plasma globe. And this is the transformer that's going to power the filament of the GU81. It's a toroid transformer where I've taken the secondary off and I've wound my own secondary on. I just took a whole bunch of wire and wound it on there, so I don't know what the voltage is going to be. I'm going to plug this in now. Let's see what voltage we got. Okay, that's weird. The transformer made a popping noise when I plugged it in. And... We're not getting anything. Oh. This has got to be on AC volts. Okay, we've got about 12.1 volts. Our mum's going... <laughs> in the next room, watching her precious beloved family guy. So I'm real close. I just need to put a few more windings on this. And then we'll see if this will power up the filament of that GU81. So, I wound a few more windings onto there. So, I just cannot stand Family Guy. I don't know how anybody could find that show funny. It's just moronic and stupid. And don't even get me started on the main character. I think his name is Peter Griffin or something. Especially when he sings that Good Morning USA song. That really irritates me. 
almost as much as the main Family Guy theme song. Anyway, right, let's plug this in now. So I plug this in now. This is microphone. So I plug the camera. I mean, I plug the coil. Um, the transformer in. Let's see what voltage we get now. Of course, again, the meter is not on AC volts. Okay, we've got about 15 volts now, which is a bit higher than what I want. I want a little bit of headroom because I know that filament's going to pull the voltage down a little bit. So I want to get this to about maybe 14 volts and then try it. Here we go. We're going to see if my homemade transformer is going to power up the filament. I'm pretty sure that it will. And also, to make things easier, I've marked on the base of the tube which filament, I mean which connection goes where. And as you can probably tell, these are the two, these are the two filament connections. And there's the filament center connection, which I'm going to leave alone for now. I'm just going to connect the transformer across those two connections there. Alright, so here we go. My transformer's connected. I've also got my meter connected so we can see what the voltage is. So, let's plug in and see what happens. Does it light up? Is it going to work? And yes, it is. Almost effortlessly. Okay, we've got 12 points. About 12.08 volts. So it's pulling the voltage down a bit. So I might add a couple of extra turns to the transformer. But that's working really good. I like to know how much current that's actually pulling, but um, my meter only goes up to 10 amps. Oh hell, I'll do it anyway. Okay, here we are. Ignore this wire here. That's not doing anything. That's just that's just going to this clip here, which is holding the holding the wire on. So let's plug this in and let's see if we can measure the amount of amps this is taking. I really. This will probably be too much for my meter to measure, but we'll see. Alright, we're drawing about 9.1 amps. Okay, well here it is all wired up. And I'm using the webcam's microphone because this might interfere with my regular microphone. So anyway, we're about to test it with the GU81. So this is the circuit using the light bulb capacitor as my grid leak again. Anyway, let's plug in the filament. Let's get my ugly face out the shot. So, plugging in the filament. There we go. And let that warm up. It's actually a lot brighter than I remember it. But the transformer is putting out the right voltage because I measured it with the filament connected. It's about 12.7 volts, so we're good. Anyway, I've got my microwave transformer ready to power this thing, and I've made a new primary. This is the rectifier. Diode with a capacitor across it to protect the diode from blowing up. Okay, don't know how long this has been on. I just want to give it about a minute to get up to full temperature. And then we'll see if it works. This is going to be the first light. Lots of light. All right, I'm going to turn it on. All right. Well, that was with the most amount of ballast. Okay, this is with the heater set onto two. All right. I'm going to put my heater onto the fullest setting and let's see what we get. Well, I don't think that's too bad for a first run. All right. Uh... This is not a good shot. So this is one. This is full. Well, I couldn't help myself. I just have to try this on a voltage doubler, which is here. This is circuit. So I've got no idea yeah, how well this is going to work. So let's see. It seems about the same as it was before. 
Let's just see if adjusting this makes any difference. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me just sort out this stupid webcam. Alright, so, ready to test this thing at its full potential, or at least, with as much ballast as my heater can provide. I really hope that my tuning capacitor's not gonna arc over, I mean, it's in oil, but if it arcs over, it arcs over. Anyway, that's enough gabbling on, now let's see the test. I have no idea how well this is going to work myself, but first, let's try it with the heater on the one setting. Okay. Yep, I think that's about as much as I'm going to get out of this. Although I think, actually, if I detune this a bit, I'm just adjusting the variable capacitor. Just adjusting a little bit, then testing. Seeing what gives me the best output. Thing is, you see, the streamers are going to detune it a little bit, so you got to take that... Got to take that into account. Okay, so it's even better output now. So I'm going to try it on three. So there it is, everybody. My homemade vacuum tube Tesla coil. So before we go, I'm just going to do a little overview of the circuit now. Hopefully we won't have too much in the way of jelly vision. And yes, I know it's a little bit unfocused right now, but the thing is, I've got the autofocus off, so when we go up close... You can see things much more clearly. See? You can see every single winding on that transformer. And also, I might be talking and then the camera might drift off and start looking at something else because the thing is, the screen is right behind me, so I cannot actually see what the camera's seeing unless I look behind me. So, um,. So let's just take a look at the circuit. So let's just take a so let's just take a close look at this Tesla coil. So over here we've got the power supply. This is the high voltage low current part that supplies the high voltage. It's a microwave oven transformer connected to a capacitor. Then that goes into this diode with another capacitor across it. That's to prevent the diode from exploding because it filters out any RF going into that diode which would otherwise make it explode. So we've got one side of the diode, the negative side of the diode connected to the ground, and the positive side of the diode and goes out and into the circuit. This is the low voltage, high current part of the power supply, which is a Torre transformer that you saw me experiment with. So that gives out about 13 volts under load. So when that's connected to the filament, that gives out about 13 volts, which is a little bit high, but it shouldn't damage anything. And then, of course, we've got the tube itself, a GU81, the directly heated version. And back here, there's my grid leak circuit, a light bulb with a capacitor across it. I think the capacitor is about 2.2 nanofarads, if I remember. Rated for 3000 volts, and the bulb is just an ordinary 60 watt light bulb. Yeah, there's just the filter circuit to prevent any unwanted parasitic oscillations and to protect the tube from those. This is my tuning capacitor, and this is my primary capacitor, which is just a 
old 1950s tuning capacitor that I put under oil. Seems to work well enough. And there it is tuned to the right position. And I've tuned this to where I get the best output. Or at least the most output I can get before it destroys my coil. And of course, here is the coil itself, the secondary. The wire I got from that from an old transformer that was originally the primary winding of a of a mains transformer. And down underneath it, you might be able to see the the feedback coil that I wound onto the bottom of the secondary. And of course, there's my primary itself, which is about 44 turns. lift the primary up there, you can see the secondary wound onto the bottom. I mean, you can see the feedback wound onto the bottom of the secondary. That way I don't have to worry about, that way I don't have to worry about tuning my secondary. I mean, that way I don't have to worry about tuning my feedback. That way I don't have to worry about what position the feedback's in. That way I don't need to worry about where my feedback is, because it'll work anyway. And well, that's the end of this video, so yeah. Until next time, goodbye. And kids, you can use my until next time goodbye. I have absolutely nothing against that, so yeah. Well, you know. Weeble Wobble Clem, get out of here. We do not want you. We don't, we don't want Weeble Wobble Clem.